Okay, welcome back, Facebook family. Uh, look who I have here, Senator Ted Harvey from Colorado and chairman of the Committee to Defend President Donald J. Trump. Thank you so much for being with me today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me on. Appreciate it. This is a special interview. And hopefully for you guys can hear us. Hopefully you can. It looks like the connection's okay. Sorry about the last one. It looked like the connection was dicey, so I ended the feed. But... There's nothing going on to, to defend the president about. There's actually nothing going on in the news. <laughs> Other than the fact that the uh, left is unhinged in their effort to try to bring down the president. Um, if you watched the, uh, the news yesterday, as you all know, the Mueller report is supposed to come out in the next day, week or two. And um, the Mueller report is going to say that there was no collusion. There was no obstruction of justice. But the... Um, the media, the left, is now going, okay, well, that uh, didn't help us. That didn't give us any justification to impeach the president. So now let's bring forward his lying uh, former attorney, and let's do it three days' worth of committee hearings trying to talk about you know, what a scumbag Cohen is. And um, that's going to fall short, and now the Democrats are freaking out because the president walked away from a bad deal in North Korea. Um, I would personally rather have the president be like Ronald Reagan in it when he walked away from Gorbachev and said, it's not a good deal, we're not going to do it, and walk away from that rather than being like Barack Obama and his administration, signing a deal with Iran that actually put the world and the United States in a worse position. And um, that's called leadership. That's going to the table, trying to have the negotiations, and then at the last minute saying, this isn't a good deal, we're going to walk away. And I would much rather have the president do that than sign up for a bad deal. I, I completely agree with you. And, you know, I was listening to some history on summits with people like Gorbachev, and my understanding was it took five meetings you bet. before they were able to come up with an agreement. You bet. So this is, you know, all of this has to do with strategy. This is not, you know, the president being weak. It's actually the president being strong. Yeah. He, he's made his entire livelihood is billions by negotiating deals until he gets the deal that he wants. And I wouldn't want to be on the other side of the table negotiating with no. Donald Trump. And rule number one in the art of the deal, right? Be willing to walk away. That's right. Don't Up until the very last minute, being willing to walk away. Don't be so... Um, committed and sold on the deal that you would sign it even if it's a bad deal. Even at the very last second be willing to walk away. And he definitely was. I couldn't, li I, listen, I, as I said to you before we got on this live, I was disappointed because I was so hopeful that something was going to happen but I understood it. And he said, I don't right. want to do this quickly and I don't want a bad deal. I want a deal that's going to work for the country. And frankly, isn't that what we want? Do we want a president who's he has no backbone and doesn't do the right thing on behalf of the country. He's not doing this for himself. That's right. And, and, and the deal is do away with your nuclear capabilities. It, if, until they do say, okay, we'll allow you to come in and be able to um, inspect all of our facilities and confirm that there are, are no nuclear weapons being developed and, and uh, deployed, um, Trump's not going to agree to anything. And the, the Premier Kim said that he would start slowly doing it, but he's not going to do it immediately. Well, that's not good enough. We want immediate ability to go in and check to make sure that your facilities are not continuing to be active. And if he's not going to do that, then we're not going to let up on the sanctions. And God bless Trump for being there. Absolutely. Can yeah. you imagine if Hillary Clinton was President of the United States? Oh, good, dear goodness. And um, Kim started shooting warheads missiles that had the ability started shooting warheads that had the ability to hit Washington DC. I mean what would Hillary Clinton do? What would what would the Democrats have done in that situation? Thank give, God Donald Trump is in office. Give them the sun, the moon and the stars. Jordan Rickards right. in the in, in the chat wants to know how many Russian agents are at CPAC. <laughs> this one. This just, is the only one right me. here. You're looking at it. <laughs> just just me. Well I want to switch gears just a little bit and talk about Talk about the Cohen situation. Since you are the chairman on the committee to defend the president, how do you defend people that say, oh, like, there are people who say, how can you support somebody who's quote unquote a bad guy? I say, what? Someone who sins? Someone who's flawed? You mean like me? Yeah. Right, exactly. I'm flawed. <laughs> So how well, do you defend well, that? Well, what the important thing that came out of yesterday's hearing was that Cohen said that he has no 
evidence of collusion with the Russians. That's the number one thing that came out of that. Um, he has no evidence of obstruction of justice, of the president trying to obstruct the investigation into the collusion. So the entire narrative that the Democrats have been running with for the last three years practically at this point is that there was Russia collusion and their number one witness. They finally get control of the House of Representatives. They finally have told all of their supporters and all of their donors they're going to have hearings to, on this issue that they're going to impeach the president on this Russia collusion thing, their number one witness comes in and he says, I have no evidence of Russia collusion. And, and, so and that's, we, that's it? That's what we've been waiting for all this time? And, and all they're doing is using what little teeny tiny bit of information they have to, to say that the president is, is tried and convicted, right. which is, is, is just amazing. Right. To me. And, and then the next thing they said is that he violated campaign finance law by using his own private funds prior to announcing his candidacy for president to uh, finalize a contract for this lady to keep her mouth shut. Um, that's not using campaign funds. That's not a campaign finance violation. That's just a prudent businessman protecting his brand. Um, and so... Even that situation, I think, is embarrassing that that's what the Democrats are running with because they have nothing else to give to the American populace going into the 2020 election because all, all they have right now is we believe in infanticide and we believe in no borders and we believe in socialism. If that's what they want to take to the American public in 2020, then go for it. Exactly. And President Bad. And, and, and the president's bad. Yeah, let's not forget that. That's, that's a winning strategy. That's exactly I, I really right. don't think it is. But listen, I want to thank. I was going to say governor. Why not? Make you a governor. Senator. <laughs> Sen I will put for you if I look to Colorado. There you Senator go. Ted Harvey, chairman of the committee to defend the president, and he does a fantastic job doing it. You can see why he has that job. I want to thank you so much for being on the show and doing this live with me today. Thank you. You are wonderful. Thank you so much. You're the best. Thank you. Thank well. you.